doing my best today. Uh, the last few Sundays, I've been trying hard to muster a voice, uh, but I had to, you know, I had to conserve it. I had to conserve it before I lost it all. But today, today, I'm just going to let it rip. Amen. I'm just going to let it go and give God glory and praise and honor and thanksgiving. Amen. Thanksgiving may have been last week, but it doesn't stop. I'm going to keep on giving thanks. I'm going to keep on giving him glory. And I'm going to keep on lifting him up because he has been good and he continues to be good. If you have your cell phone with you, you haven't put it on silent yet, let me invite you to do so. As I often say, while you may love your jingle, it can interrupt everything we are about to participate in. And so go ahead and do that for us. And we're getting ready to worship. We're going to open in prayer. And then our worship team, I think our worship team is coming right now uh, and taking their places. Hint, hint. Uh, praise God. <laughs> hint, hint. Amen. Praise God. I knew they could use a little help. I knew they could use a little help. Bless the Lord. Let's stand together as we open our service in prayer. And we are going to delight ourselves in worshiping the Lord. We're praying for those that are yet on their way for safe traveling mercy. And we're just going to delight ourselves in the one who has called us. The one who has chosen us and ordained us to live out this awesome life in Christ Jesus. Father, we say thank you today. Thank you for your unparalleled love that you shower upon us who believe you. We thank you for the invitation to be able to gather together with the people of God. Knowing that it will benefit our souls and quicken our spirit and bring life to everything we do. We rejoice in you now because, God, we know that you've invited us here for a purpose. A purpose that only you can declare and only you can fulfill. So we invoke your presence right now in the strong name of Jesus because we recognize that a gathering together like this without you is just a social event. But we need your anointing, we need your presence, we need your input, we need your counsel, we need your power, we need your might. We need everything, God, that you can bring to bear upon this celebration and this gathering. We lift it up into your hands. We're anticipating you doing something that will cause us to shout even louder than we've ever shouted before. We need healing. We need deliverance. We need God. We need you to encourage our hearts. We need you to lift us in spirit. And we need you to bless our lives. So we're asking you to have your way today. We know, God, that we have a service that's ordered, but that doesn't make any difference at all. You do whatever you desire to do in our midst, and we'll say yes and amen, because we know it's going to be better than what we plan. So have your way right now. Anoint our musicians, anoint our worship team, anoint our people, anoint every person that's going to participate in this service. And let everything that is done here redound to your glory that you might be praised and honored and highly lifted up among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You know. As I was uh, sitting here, the Lord just dropped this little song in my spirit. It, it, it's so appropriate because I've been really ill for the last over a week now. And I'm so glad to be in his service. Glad to be in his service. Glad to be in his service one more time. You didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. Glad to be in the service one more time. I'm so glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service one more time. Oh, didn't have to let me live. 
didn't have to let me live glad to be in his service one more time sing it one more time glad to be in his service glad to be in his service glad to be in his service one more time oh didn't have to let me live didn't have to let me live glad to be in his service 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 one more time. Oh, he didn't have to let me live. Didn't have to let me live. Glad to be in his service. I'm so glad. Glad to be in his I'm so glad. Glad to be in one more time. Glad to be in his service one more time. Hallelujah. So glad to be in his service. He didn't have to let us live, but he did. And we ought to be grateful about it. And we ought to be on our feet giving him honor, giving him glory and praise. It's not anything we can take for granted. It's a privilege to be in his service one more time. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endure forever. Hallelujah.
above all names. You're worthy of all my praise. Worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. 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 Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. Hey, worthy of all my praise. Worthy of all my praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your name. Your name's above all names. Your name is above all names. Worthy of all my praise. Worthy of all my praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. 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 greater than our God.
come on and worship him in this place. Give him honor and give him glory in this place for he is worthy. He is the great king. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted high and exalted in this place. Lord, we bless you in this place. Our king is lifted high. You are the only true living God. We lift you high above every name. The name is that is given where men must worship you. Hallelujah. The King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. That our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. King, we bless you in this place, Jesus. We hallow your great name. You are the great God and King. You are the highest of all, O oh God. And you are exalted in this place. Hallelujah. Let our King be lifted up. It is time for us now to go before this great king we just sing about and offer up our prayers and our petitions. Amen. Amen. You know, as I thought about this time of prayer, I thought to myself, we're going before the God who gives us joy, the God who provides our peace, our security in what he is in what he has promised us. I mean, for me, it helps me to go with a different attitude and a different mindset. I can kick the negativities and the doubts aside because there's a God who cannot lie that I'm going to be talking with, I'm going to be communing with, I'm going to be laying my troubles at his feet. And so as we prepare our hearts, if there are any urgent requests and uh, you want to take a second to voice them, go right ahead. We'll give, remember Marva, yes. Amen. Let's continue. <laughs> Let's remember Marva in a very special way. Yes, Eric. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for Dennis being here with us. Praise God. He was in the hospital a couple of days last week. And he's here singing with the choir again, doing what he loves to do. Praise God. We thank God for his healing. Let's remember the ministry, our sick and shut in, the ungodly. Hallelujah. Let's remember. You know what stays in my head since... The Lord uh, put a me uh, the message in my uh, heart maybe a month or so ago that when we're walking around, we're seeing ungodly people, we're seeing people who are condemned because the Bible says if they have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, they are uh, condemned already. It ought to give us a new understanding and a new attitude as we deal with ungodly people because God has called us to be the light, hallelujah, he has called us to be the one 
the conduit, if you will, that helps lead them to Jesus Christ. Let's not forget that. That is something we simply cannot forget as Christians, especially and as a ministry. Amen? Amen? And so we're going to go before God, and we're going to believe God, and we're going to anticipate and expect something wonderful to happen today. Amen. It's going to start today. Amen. Let us stand. Praise the Lord. Let us stand. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Yes, Ivan. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we humble our hearts in your presence. We come before you, God Almighty, who loved us in demonstrating, Lord God, sacrificing your Son for us. Hallelujah. We come before you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, trusting that, Father, in the name of Jesus, what we bring before you that is according to your will, that you have heard us. And the things that we petition before you, Lord God, we can have them. Healing is a part of your promise. It's a part of your word. So we're trusting you, Lord God, for divine healing. We understand that doctors aren't necessary and you gifted them in certain ways. But there are things that the doctors don't understand. There are things that the doctors just can't do. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your spirit, move and just cause healing to happen in our midst. Healings to happen in the kingdom of God. Healings, Lord God, in a very wonderful and powerful way. Father, we come before you, Lord God, with various needs. We have financial issues and struggles. Hallelujah. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we're just believing you for wisdom. We're believing you for direction. We're believing you just for a blessing. Hallelujah. To help us in our situations. There are family situations in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we're trusting you, Lord God, to cause reconciliation to happen in the name of Jesus. Father, we're coming to you with every possible thing that comes to our heart and mind, knowing that you see them first. You know what they are. And Father, we're just believing for something different to happen. We let go of things, Lord God, that we've been trying to handle on our own. We let go of things, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thought we could figure out and we could do. We come into your presence understanding, Lord God, without you it's impossible to do anything, Lord God, that you are worthy of. And so, Father, we just lay our cares at your feet right now. And we're asking you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, to help us. We are sheep in your presence. You are God. And you're God all by yourself. We lay aside, Lord God, our pride. We lay aside our degrees, our know-it-all. We, we lay everything aside right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, because we don't want to be in the way of what it is you might say. We don't want to be in the way of what it is you want to do. We don't want to be in the way, hallelujah, of the blessings that you have before us. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, pour out your spirit, pour out your anointing, pour out your blessings, pour out what is needed for us today. Hallelujah. And we'll say thank you. 
We'll say thank you because you're faithful. We'll say thank you in advance because you haven't failed us yet. We'll say thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus because you simply know what is best for us. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, would you just have your way right now? And all God's people said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is time for our offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's get as happy as we were doing worship because it's still a part of worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What is, what are we having? It is our tithe and benevolent offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so we know what God has required of us as believers. If you're visiting, we have a benevolent offering that we use in order to benefit people in the church and in the community. And if you decide to give in to that, uh, put your offering in the basket marked special. And we're just going to believe God. Would you stand with me? Father, we thank you. Every one of us here, Lord God, have something to be thankful for. We thank you, Lord God, for being able to give into this offering. And if there may be someone here who is not able, who feels that they're not able, Father, in the name of Jesus, move by your spirit and provide what is necessary for their faith. Hallelujah in you. And so we thank you in advance, Lord God, that you know what you need and you know how to get it. And we're praying that you would breathe on what we are planning to give and that, Father, in the name of Jesus, it would be more than enough. And so move by your spirit and minister to each one of us, Lord God, according to what you would have us to give. And we say thankful in advance for what you're going to do in encouraging and building your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Slipping away, economy's down, people can't get enough. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. It could have been, it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes. Alone without a friend, or just another number with a tragic end. But you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. It could have been me. Doors with no food, no clothes, or left alone without a friend, or just a number with a tragic end. 
each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, because it could have been us in other people's situation. But he's placed us where he has placed us, and he's blessing us, and he will guide and protect us. We just have to trust him. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Good afternoon, Life Center Church of God. Good afternoon. It is truly a pleasure to be with you, whether you're streaming with us or you're here in the sanctuary. It is a good thing to be together. And for anyone who is visiting with us, whether you're home folk or you're newlyweds or anybody else, we want to let you know on behalf of Pastor Daniel Robinson and Sister Teresa Robinson and this entire church family, welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. I just have a few announcements. The first one is, those of you who got a bulletin, you saw that there was a flyer inserted. It says, a Chris, Christmas candlelight celebration in concert. The Garden Grove Church of God worship team and Koinonia Choir. Music directors, Lorinda Jameson and Hardin Walker Jr. And that event will be on Sunday, December 17th at 5 p.m. So if you would like to come and, and join in this time of, of celebrating the Christmas season, mark that on your calendar, December 17th, Sunday at 5 p.m. Also, the office will be closed this week, November 28th through December 1st. So make sure you don't come looking for Sister Michelle during this week. It will, the office will be closed November 28th through the 1st of December. I would like to meet with the married couples briefly after service um, on this side, if at all possible. Briefly, briefly. Remember, Bible study is on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. All are welcome, whether you're in the sanctuary or streaming with us. Come and let us learn together. For it, uh, please check TLC's web calendar. Um, you may go to www.life at, and that's at, tlc .com for any further news about what's going on here at TLC. Have a blessed day. Know that God loves you. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes discouraged, but not defeated. Cast down, but not destroyed. Sign, don't understand. But I believe it's turning around for me. I've had struggles and disappointments. Sometimes I felt so alone. my friends they let me down but I still believe it's turning around for me around for me around for me around Around for me. Around for me. 
what it looks like or what it feels like I believe God is turning around for me It's not turning around because you're in charge. It's turning around because God's got your back. God's holding your life in his hands. He has a vested interest in your future. He's going to turn it around just so the devil won't win. Amen. Yeah. You know, God's going to turn this thing around no matter how you feel. Because he's already spoken concerning you. And the very thing that he began, he is going to perform until the day of Jesus Christ. That sounds like turning it around for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. While you're having a pity party, he's working on your comeback. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, while you can't get up and go and you can't muster any energy, he's working on something on your behalf. I'm so glad he's going to turn it around. Because we don't have the energy nor the power to do so. We need him to do it in us and through us and for us. And even at times in spite of us, we need him to do it. Glory, hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, choir, for helping us to understand that he's going he's gonna to turn it around for me. Amen. I feel my help coming already. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Before I begin, I do want to take a moment uh, to thank all of you for the many cards and gifts, prayers and encouragements, and all of the things that you did. Uh, for my birthday last Sunday. Uh, I had a great birthday last Sunday. And my wife topped it off by taking me to a nice restaurant down in Long Beach. Um, something on the bay. What was it, Mama? Something? Boathouse on the bay. Like Otis Redding said, I was sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time while the waves rolled away. Come on, yeah, yeah, I know. That just touched the chord in some of you. Took you back a few years, I know. All right, snap out of it, snap out of it. Come back to your saved self. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If I didn't get a chance to thank you personally, I want to thank you in this uh, public setting. Just to let everyone know how blessed I felt, how encouraged I was because of your kindnesses and your love that you poured out and in the ways that you showed your love 
to me on my birthday. Wow, I'm a little older, but I'm feeling good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. I'm going to, since, since Carol is here, I'm going to ask her to pray this prayer for me, for me preaching uh, this service. And uh, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask her. She doesn't have to come out. I'm going to ask her to stand right where she is. And she's going to pray for us. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time. You have a word to help us grow. Everything begins with you. We thank you for this gathering for the music that's so uplifting, for the musicians, for those who are serving in every capacity and for everyone who's here because we love you. We thank you for Pastor, whom you repaired a word in him for us today. We thank you that you continue to work in us to change our mindset from what we came in with to the one that you want us to have that is heavenly. And so we ask your anointing be uh, uh, upon us. We already believe that you've anointed pastor and the word that he's going to give. But we're asking that you would anoint our minds help us to settle down from everything else and just concentrate on what it is that you will say to us today and we will continue to praise your name and though we might have to struggle with something that we hear today it's for our good we thank you for the encouragement and whatever it else that you bring to us today god you're always right and you love us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So good to see Timmy and Damon here. Um, as I often say, it's a long walk from Baltimore. And so I know it took some time to get here. The worst part about a trip is that once you get there, you have to remember you got to go back. So it's a long walk back as well. But it is a joy uh, to have you here with us. It's a joy to be able to celebrate Michelle's birthday on Tuesday night. We had a great time together. And uh, we were just blessed to be able to be with all of these people that had come to be with Michelle friends and loved ones, family. It was just a great time. We laughed much. We ate too much. And uh, we are here today for prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his goodness. Well, let's take a look at the word of God and um, let's see what the Lord might say to us today from his word. Let me begin uh, with just a brief introduction and then we'll get right into our passage of scripture. Uh, as, as many of you know, uh, the books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations were written for the purpose of prophesying the doom of the southern kingdom of Israel. They are filled with the promise of wrathful judgment which God had assigned to a nation totally given over to sin and rebellion. It was in keeping with the words that Moses spoke to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verses 15 through 68. 
yet in the midst of all of the promised doom and woe, God spoke of salvation. He spoke of a way out. And this afternoon I want us to examine what God said to the people in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 1 through 13. And then share a few thoughts from the theme, this God is our God. You might remember that either from the song that we sing, Let Mount Zion Rejoice, which comes from Psalm 48, verse 14. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. What a great word that is. This God is our God. And that's the theme that I want to share from this afternoon that I hope uh, that as we take a look at this passage, uh, you will receive help, strength, and encouragement. Amen? You have that passage, Isaiah 55? Amen. Let me read it from the King James Version with just a few um, adjustments. Ho! Everyone that thirsts, come to the waters, and he that has no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore, or why do you spend money for that which is not bread, and labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen intently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that you do not know, and nations that did not know you shall run unto you because of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For you shall go out with joy... And be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. May the Lord add a blessing. To the reading of his word. Wow. Remember now, this passage of scripture, together with the uh, previous two chapters and the chapter just following, or at least the majority of it, 
breathe hope to a nation that is on the very brink of destruction. The nation, without question, deserves its assigned fate. Yet God offers an invitation that would allow them to escape what they so justly deserve. Somebody say, this God is our God. <laughs> you, you ought to just pause and just give thanks to God that he did not give you what you deserve. Come on. <clears throat> even though this is, Daryl, and even though this is an Old Testament passage, the gospel is all in it. Come on, somebody. We deserve judgment and we deserve death. And God decided sovereignly that he was literally going to choose his own son to die in our stead so that we did not get what we rightly deserve. I haven't even started and I'm happy already. Wow. This is incredible. This passage is absolutely incredible. There are three discernible sections in this chapter that help us to appreciate God's awesomeness. Three distinctive sections in this chapter, and I'm going to list the, the, the theme of each part of the chapter for you so that if you're a note taker, you can write it down. First of all, there is the incredible invitation or offer that God makes. There is an incredible invitation or offer that comes from God. Remember now, God has already pronounced doom and woe and judgment. And in the midst of all of this, he gives an invitation for them to escape it. Oh, Lord, help us. Mm. The second thing is, is that he gives a grace-filled exhortation to the people. A grace-filled exhortation to these people who have rejected him, rebelled against him, and literally walked away from him. And then thirdly, there is an unfailing promise that God gives to those who make a decision to take him up on his offer. When you understand the context of what this is written in, it gives you a renewed appreciation for who God is and how big God's heart is for people. In Ezekiel chapter 18, the Bible says that God does not delight in the death of the wicked, but that they turn and live. Whoa, 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 hold up. The Bible also says that God is angry with the wicked all day long. So the folk he's angry with, he's offering an out. That's right. <laughs> now let me. I would say slap your neighbor and wake him up because they're not getting it yet. But I want you, I want you to think about what's happening in this passage. Let's take a look at this passage. I'm, I'm going to deal with the first one, the incredible invitation or the offer of God. This, this passage begins with a word that we are not familiar with. The King James Carroll puts it this way. Ho! If you live in South Central, it would be Yo! What is it saying? It's literally saying, stop what you're doing. Listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. 
Because this may be your only opportunity to get out. You got ho? You got what, you got what ho means? <laughs> and you know, we don't live in 1611 when the King James was written, so you understand it better as yo. All right? But, but I'm, this, is, this is the cry. Stop what you're doing. Pay attention. Listen carefully. Because this may be the last time this invitation is given to you. Man, life is so fleeting. You don't know when you're going to check out of here. There are church folk that have shouted loud and given God glory and praise and never made it home. And it was not because they had done anything wrong. God has an assigned time for you to live on this planet. And when that time is up, it's up. And you're checking out whether you think you are or not. So because you do not know when, we have to sit up and pay attention to what God is saying now. That's why God says, behold, now is the time of salvation. Today is the day that you need to listen and grab a hold to what God has. You may not have tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? Ho! Everyone that is thirsting, come to the waters. And he that has no money, turn to your neighbor and says, I think he's talking about you. Come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. This is awesome. That means everyone can get what God has because you don't have to afford it. In Christ Jesus, it's already paid for. God knew that many of us would not have much at all. You don't have to wait until you get something to get happy because the invitation is given to you when you don't have anything. He's saying if you're broke, don't let that stop you from coming. If you don't have a job, don't let that stop you from coming. If you're caught up right now, don't let it stop you from coming because what you need, he's got and he's going to give it to you, not sell it to you. Did I say it was an incredible invitation? It's an incredible invitation. It's an awesome offer. God is handing this thing out to you, and he's saying to you, you can take it. You don't have to afford it. I've got your name on it, and it's free. That sounds like the gospel to me. <laughs> wow. Come and buy. Come and eat. Come and drink. You don't need any money. Watch this. And there is no price tag on it. Do you see that in the verse? Buy wine and milk without money and without price. <laughs> wow. When was the last time you went into Macy's <laughs> and saw something that didn't have a price tag on it? You took it up to the counter and the, and the lady told you, that's free. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's never happened to me. <laughs> they will let you know what the price is. <laughs> Amen. But God's saying, you can have this. There's no price tag on it. You can come and take this, and you're not going to be charged anything for it. Wow. I think three of you are getting this. Let's 
listen to what he says. Still a part of the invitation. Verse 2. Why is it that you spend money for that which is not bread? And exert labor on that which does not bring you satisfaction? As if to say, what are you doing? Why are you doing it and continuing to do it if it does not bring you the satisfaction you desire? So this is what he's saying. What you really need, what you are really desiring and looking to grab a hold to is found in me. We spend a whole lot of time, well, let me, let me rephrase that. We waste a whole lot of time trying to grab a hold to what we believe is going to satisfy us. And when we get it completely and fully, we recognize that's not what I really need. Instead of going to God, we go on another quest for something else other than God that we believe might fix us. Only to find out that that didn't do it either. And if you wake up with any sense, you'll stop the pursuit and you'll go back to God, the one who satisfied you in the beginning. So that you don't waste any more time. That's why he's saying, come to me. That's what he's saying. He says, why do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is, let me add something, truly good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. This is, man, this is, I wish... I wish I was not preaching this. I wish I was just listening to this and just sitting down with you. Did you hear what he just said, Leon? You are, you are working for the thing that's not really bread. You are laboring for things that really do not satisfy. I'm telling you, come to me. And I am not only just going to make sure you were taken care of, I am going to fatten you up. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm going to satisfy your soul with fatness. Or I'm going to delight myself in blessing you, whereby you just say, Lord, hold up a moment. I don't have any more room to receive what you're pouring out into my life. Sometimes we're grasping for things that are material that really do not satisfy us. Notice, notice what God is saying here, and I don't want you to miss it, because he says it a few times. The satisfaction that God brings. This is, this is the most important thing about God's satisfaction. It fattens the soul. It fattens the soul. What I've come to realize is that there are things that may delight your flesh, but never touch your soul. That, that's why you are not eternally satisfied. Because when your flesh is satiated or satisfied, it, it wears off and you need it to be satisfied again. But when your soul connects with the goodness of God, there is a joy, an inexpressible joy. Come on, somebody. You wonder why you happy and you broke? Because your soul is satisfied. <laughs> Come on. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah! Yes, 
Yeah. It says in verse 2, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Verse 3, incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Man, I'm telling you, I wish I had on a white suit so I could preach myself right into heaven. Huh? Come on now. Listen to what he's saying. He says, I want to. I want to I wanna satisfy your soul with fatness. <clears throat> I want to renew the covenant with this generation of people that you might know the blessings of this covenant. Come on. And if that wasn't enough, he says... I want to make sure that you participate in the sure mercies of David. Wow. Man, this is awesome. If you recounted, Darylin, all of the things that God did for David... And spoke to David by promise. The way that God poured out his loving kindness on David and the house of David and the children of David and the kingdom of David. God is saying, I want to I wanna let you feel that kind of loving kindness. I want your soul to be in touch with the awesome mercies and the glory of God that establishes you with him for eternity. I don't want you to be just blessed with a new car that ain't going to glory. I want to bless your life with something that's eternal that your soul can be satisfied with so that you can get up, yes, on a Monday morning and go to work happy. <laughs> wow. Isn't that awesome? That God... Now, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. Hold, hold up. Janet, hold up. Carmela, he's speaking to a people that are in rebellion. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, if he would want to do that, for folk in rebellion? I got a feeling that the rest of us, <laughs> we, we ought to be getting happy right about now. This God is our God. These are the kinds of things that our God does for his people. I had a voice when I came in, but I got a feeling I will not have one when I go out. This God is our God. Somebody ought to get happy and shout, this God is our God. Oh, yeah. Come on, Lord. Give me the sure mercies of David who was a man after your own heart. David asked the question, God, look, why, why, why have you done this for me? 
I just come from a little old family. I'm the least in my father's house. Why would you do this for me? <laughs> because he's plenteous in mercy. And whoever he chooses, he blesses. Come on, somebody. He has chosen us in the beloved, and his whole mindset is to bless you. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Oh, come on, somebody. Mm. This God is our God. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> wow. I may not be able to finish this today. So we'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> or you'll give me a few more minutes today and we'll take care of this today. Ah, watch this. Whew. I may not even get past point one today. Behold is another way of saying ho. Verse four. I have given him for a witness to the people. <laughs> this gets better and better as it goes along. We have never really realized why God gave David until we see it here. I have given him to be a witness to the people. Oh God. oh, God, help me now. Mm. I might just flip out and go crazy now. But let me try to contain myself as I share this with you. I have given him as a witness. The word in the Hebrew means witness or testimony. I have given him as a witness or a testimony to the people. I have made him the commander because I wanted him to be out front where everybody could see him. Come on. Lord, help us. This is, this is it. This is it. I want the people... To see what I do for somebody that sold out for me. Lord have mercy. I want the people to see what it looks like when I bless somebody that really walks with me and talks with me and I'm his everything. He's saying, this is what God is saying. Look at where you are. And then compare that with how I blessed David. And why I did what I did for him. And what's happening now to you. Because you've abandoned me. But I want you to take a look at how I mercifully blessed David in his life. Oh, come on somebody. I've given him as a witness or a testimony to the people about how I shower favor on those who love me. You might, you might not see me for two weeks. <laughs> I may need that much time to recuperate from preaching this sermon. Watch this now. Behold, oh God. <laughs> now God is prophesying. He's saying, listen, if you do what I tell you to do, if you serve me like I tell you to serve me, if you follow David's example, you will call a nation that you do not know. And nations that did not know you 
shall run unto you because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified you. This is, this is the idea. Still, he's still, watch this, Daryl. He is still talking about the sure mercies of David. <clears throat> oh, God, help us. You might remember that David was such an awesome force in the earth because of God's hand upon him that nations were bringing gifts to the kingdom of Israel because of who David was. They submitted themselves unto him. Oh, oh God. <clears throat> when Solomon who was instructed by David because of what the Lord said about building the first temple. When Solomon got ready to build, he already had what he needed. Because of what all the nations brought to... Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. God is saying, if we serve him, the sure mercies of David will fall upon us. So that whatever you need for whatever you're going to do, God will provide it. Because that is what God has always intended. He's always intended to bless his people. If his people would get on the train that is conducted by the Holy Ghost. Come on, we're jumping on our own trains and going all over the place and we ain't getting on the train that's really going somewhere. Come on, come on. Now he's speaking prophetic. God is saying, I have already determined to put my hand upon you to bless you. That's what that word, I have glorified thee means. I have put my hand already upon you to do you good. And you can take a hold of it by doing what I told you. You got that? Come on, let's go on to, to, to the second point. There's a grace-filled exhortation from verses 6 through 9. Let me see if I can get through this quickly and then get to the third point before I hold you to midnight. Watch this. This is the exhortation, and I said it's grace-filled. Seek Ye the Lord, while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. That tells me that we won't always have the opportunity. So we got to do it today because tomorrow may not be promised to us. We need to do it at this hour because four o'clock may not be promised to us. I want that to sink in. I, I, want, I want you to get that. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Watch this now. This is why this part of the chapter is grace-filled. Let the wicked... Forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, and he will what? The wicked? The unrighteous, the folk who have rebelled against God, turned to idols and done wickedly, God is willing to have mercy on them and to abundantly pardon them. Say yes. The reason why I'm telling you to say yes is because that's what he did for you and I. We were undone. We turn to God. He had mercy and ab abundantly pardoned us. 
I started to think about some of the stuff I used to do, did before my past. Because my brain is not a calculator, I lost count uh, somewhere early in the exchange. Man, God has forgiven us for so much. God has forgiven you for a whole lot of stuff. <clears throat> that side's getting happy over that. Watch this. God is forgiving you for a whole lot of stuff. Hey, hey, that, this side was supposed to get happy. You all got happy already. And because God is so merciful and knows you're going to mess up somewhere in the future, he's already thinking about what he's going to do to forgive you for what you're about to do. All of us have come short of the glory of God. Come on, somebody. Jesus, when he said and responded to the man who said, good master, he said, none are good, but God only. That means the rest of us need forgiveness. We need help. We need God's instruction and counsel and undergirding. I, you know, Carol, I had planned to come here today and just, and just sort of talk. <laughs> Somewhere I lost my mind right at the beginning and the talk was over. I'm in preaching, full preaching mode. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him just return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him to our God and he will abundantly pardon. And I'm thinking, like I said earlier, if he's going to do that for the wicked, man, I got a chance here. <laughs> let me help somebody. Because this is encouragement to you. It does not matter what you've done. It does not matter where you've been. And it does not matter how long you've been there. If he will abundantly pardon the wicked and the unrighteous, you got hope. You ought to celebrate today. He's given you another chance. He's opening up an invitation. He's given to you an offer. And now he's giving a grace-filled exhortation. Oh, God, help us here. <laughs> wow. Come on, somebody. Do I have about, do I, do I have about 55 more minutes? <laughs> Come on. Now, notice, now, notice here, he says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now he says in verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my way is not your. This is why he's telling you to forsake it. Because it ain't leading you nowhere. Amen. My ways, my thoughts, God is saying will take you where you never dreamed you'd be able to go. So forsake that which is not bringing you what you think you need to have and come here to me and let me bless your life and take you where you could never take yourself. Mm -hmm. For as the heavens, verse 9, are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
Now listen to this. This is, this is number three, the unfailing promise of God. For as the rain, oh God, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but will accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Oh, come on, come on, Clarence, come on. This is what God is saying in the context. If you come to me, if you welcome what I have for you into your life. You are going to be the benefactor of everything I speak concerning you. So whatever I say that's got your name on it, you can count on it. Oh boy, I'm, I'm getting, it's time to go home, isn't it? Give me a few more minutes. <laughs> so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but will accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Then he says what he says. Watch this now. <laughs> this is the word that's going forth out of his mouth that will not return to him void. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Oh God help us. Now listen, 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 listen. God has already declared Desolation. Did you hear what I said? This whole southern kingdom has already been destined for desolation. Where just wild animals would live in it. <clears throat> all of the fruit trees, all of the, the trees that bore uh, any kind of thing that is, was edible will be destroyed and the land would be barren like a desert. <laughs> God is saying, you know something? If you all decide to turn now, I can change all of this. <laughs> If you make a decision right now while the water is troubled, while my spirit is hovering over, available to transform and to reconnect and do what he does, if you decide to make a decision for me now, I can cause everything to work in your favor. Come on, come on, come on with me now. Hills breaking forth before you into singing. Hills don't sing. It is figuring.
figurative language for producing what will make you happy. Oh, come on, somebody. Trees do not have hands to clap. But they have fruit to provide you with the nourishment that, that you need. The figurative language in the second last verse is made concrete in the last verse. That's why he says, instead of the thorn, which does not bear fruit, shall come up the fir tree that produces whatever you need. And instead of the briar, which is another kind of thorn, shall come up the myrtle tree to make sure that what you stand in need of, you will have provided for you. And God said, I'm going to do this for you. Because I want to get a name for myself. <laughs> He's the only one deserving of having his name on the marquee in lights. And it shall be for a sign that shall not be cut off or reversed. Wow. Wow. God wants to do something for his people even where they are right now in the tragic condition they're in. He wants to turn it around so he can get a name for himself that somebody out there who does not know God will come to know that he's an awesome God. This is the unfailing promise of God. The word that goes forth out of his mouth. The mouth of the God that cannot lie. Amen. The God who is not a man that he should repent. Nor the son of man. Listen, he is a God of truth. He is a God of word. When he speaks his word, he stands over it to watch it, over it, to perform it, and bring it to completion. Amen. This God. Is our God. <laughs> Must be nice to have somebody like Mike Tyson and Hulk Hogan walking around with you, giving you protection. But it ain't nothing like God who's got your back, take care of all your needs already desired to be your heavenly father in case you don't have a daddy. And he's going to be your daddy even if you have a good daddy. Amen. He loves you so much that even if you've drifted away, walked away, ran away, he's already planning for your return. <laughs> hey, I didn't make this up. God said he's married to the backslider. That means he's working on reconciliation between you and him. Not looking to ditch you because you haven't done anything for him lately. He's got his mind on you, his heart on you, his eye on you, his hand on you. And he's giving you an invitation. He's giving you an incredible offer. And he's doing that through a grace-filled exhortation, backed up by an unfailing promise of his word. What are you going to do with it? I got a choice. It's either all the woe of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentation. Or all that I just shared with you of the awesome grace of God. What do you want? 
What are you going to settle with? What are you going to take close to your heart and allow God to do in your life for the glory of his name? The right response should be this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. Hallelujah. This God, this God, this, this God, this God, this God, this God, this God. I don't know where, where you are at right now. I'm, I'm dealing with my own stuff. I'm, I'm just trying to grab a hold of God's hand right through here and walk with him and allow him to speak into my life and to order my steps. But, but if, if, if you want to go higher, if you want more of God, if you feel like, man, I, I, want, to, I want to walk with God, like, like the psalmist said, on my high places, I'm going to ask you to step out and come and we're going to pray with you. If you're here today and you're not saved, I want to pray with you for salvation so that you could know God. He's given an invitation. Even if you're a wicked person, an unrighteous person, he's giving you the invitation. I'm asking you to come and just let God speak into your life. I have preached just about all the strength out of me. And I would hope that it would not be in vain. But that you will take a hold of the word of God and allow the awesome promise of God that he has given in this chapter to become something that you hold on to tightly and that you embrace and that you walk it out for the glory of his name. Hmm. On Thursday, all of us, I believe, ate well. <clears throat> Is that right? I'm still suffering the consequences of it. <clears throat> but at no time, at no time, did I think it came from my hand. At no time. I knew it was the grace of God that provided what I had. And I'm thinking, wow. Well, if I could eat that good for my body, what does he have in store for my soul? I'm just going to invite you just to open up to him. That's all. Just open up to him. You know who you are. You know where you are. You know where you're coming short. You know what God is speaking into your life that you haven't really grabbed a hold to fully yet. I'm just asking you to be vulnerable and open and naked before him. And just allow him to shower you with his presence that brings real transformation and renewal so that you can begin to open up to the awesome things that God has your name on. In Jesus' name. Father, right now, first of all, we want to say thank you for your word through the prophet Isaiah to, to the people, these people who were in rebellion. Thank you for the awesome words you spoke to them to give them a way out, a way of mercy, a way of grace, a way of peace, a way of joy, a way that satisfies their soul with fatness. Now we bow before your throne 
and open up our hearts fully to you. Knowing that through our best efforts, we cannot lay hold to what you have for us. And so, God, we simply bow at your feet and open up our hearts wide, believing that what you have spoken you will perform if we would just release ourselves into your hands. If we would let go and let God do what he wants to do in our lives. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, break what needs to be broken in us. Heal what needs to be healed in us. Throw down what needs to be thrown down in us. Any bit of pride that we might have, we pray that you will dash it in the name of Jesus so that we could be liberated to experience the awesomeness of what you have for us. We say yes to you. We say yes to your invitation. We say yes to your offer. God, we, we bow in your presence with open hearts and open spirits. Just to say, God, we are available to you for you to do whatever you desire to do in us, through us, and for us. That your great name might be honored and that you might be glorified. Speak healing to our minds. Speak healing to the purposes that we have that are, that are not going toward you. They might be taken away and that you might fill us with your purposes and with your will. We need you. And you are saying in this passage that that is emphatically true. We're coming because we're thirsting. We're coming to the water. We're coming to buy even though we do not have any money. We're coming to you. Now minister to us right now where we are. And do whatever is necessary to help us to change course so that we are going in the direction that satisfies our souls with fatness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This God is our God. Yes. Come on. take a seat there. Yes. Forever. Forever. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you serve an incredible God? The answer is supposed to be yes. We serve an incredible God. This God, the God of Isaiah 55, 1 through 13. The God of Isaiah 53, who gave his own son to die for us. This God is our God, even unto death. Hallelujah. Stretch a hand forward toward Mava. We're going to pray over her. She's been anointed with oil. Yes. Go ahead and anoint her. Glory. We're going to believe God for healing. Daryl, did you need to be anointed as well? Okay, wonderful. 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 There are others that are asking to be anointed. Just give us a brief moment. We want to believe God for them as well. You want to be anointed, put your hand high. Some of you got your hand stretched forward, but for those that want to be anointed, stretch your hand high. Leon will come by and anoint you very quickly with oil. And we are going to pray the prayer of faith as James chapter 5 has spoken into our hearts to do. And we are going to believe God for what we stand in need of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Hallelujah. Psalm 48, 14. That's where it comes from. Hallelujah. 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 This God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. <laughs> Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and anoint me, Leon, so we can have some strength for the week. <laughs> Amen. We're going to lay hands on him. Go ahead and pray for us, Leon. Hallelujah. Father, we come into your presence now with your spirit high, feeling you, Lord God, right now, knowing that you're here. We come, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, asking for healing. And Father, we're believing for healing now. Move in a very special way. You understand, Lord God, every situation and every need. You know how long some of us have been where we are. And Father, in the name of Jesus, even for some of us, it may continue. But you're able to strengthen. You're able to undergird. You're able, Father, in the name of Jesus, to give peace. And so we're trusting you right now for a divine touch, Lord God. We're trusting you, Father, for divine deliverance. Hallelujah. We're trusting you, Lord God, for divine encouragement, Lord God, in our various situations. And so would you just move your strong hand, your strong hand. We've just talked about a God who is our God, who is merciful, hallelujah, long-suffering and kind. We give every situation into your hands. We're trusting each one of us to your care. And we believe you now for a breakthrough, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And so thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, right now for what you're doing and what you're going to do. 
to prove, Lord God, to the nations the kind of God you are, would you just have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. We're getting ready to go out and face another week. And as I look down Grace Street, it's really Grace Street. <laughs> we are going to encounter some challenges that are going to rise up against us. And as we meet with them, let's, let's just have a resounding breath in our souls that says, this God is our God, and we are going to trust Him even unto death. And it does not matter what comes our way, we are going to believe Him to take care of us. For the glory of his name. He's worthy of our praise. Stand on your feet. We're getting ready to be dismissed from this place. To go out and shout for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Feels like it's Christmas already. Thank you Lord. Thank you. Thank you Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be your children. We thank you for providing everything we need. We thank you that this week already has destiny written all over it because you knew about it and prepared for it long before we got here. So we're going to trust you in it. Now have your way and bless your people to represent you well before those who are out there. In Jesus' name. Amen. Find a number of people and greet them before you leave out today. Let them know you're happy to see them in the house of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.